Well, Paul, it's good to finally have you here for this exploration into music and especially essence music. I'm going to introduce you before I uh, bring you on and simply say that you and I have been in, we've been in the dialogue and conversations around ideas of development, spiritual journey and essence music and the essence of art for many years as part of our community endeavor. And in recent years, you have volunteered your unique skill and gift in producing both live music when we are in a workshop sometime with a large group of people or a small group of people. And this way of yourself and yourself with others with the capacity to translate the atmosphere and the, the nature of the process we are in, in the moment live into music, new music, almost as though, I don't know if you will be using the word channel or a conduit or a vessel for the music. I'm, I'm sure we're going to be talking through those delineations. But also, you have produced some moving and compelling and state producing music that I integrated to various recordings that I've done in what we call the 2020 series and recently into a body of work we call the Epoch Culmination series. And there again the fascination and the interest for me is how you lend yourself in service to something and you are able to create and produce for that the, the conductive music that it needs. So that's me jumping right at the deep end of the content we want to explore. But I, I do wonder if um, you can offer first a, a very brief bio of your journey with music to get us located because I, I've been wanting for a while to have you on Portals of Perception and bring your journey with music and with essence music and with essence art as a portal, a portal of perception to the kind of potential that we're trying to sense into in the idea that every human is a portal and we can all become portals of possibility. So with that, Please, uh, how would you describe a, a brief uh, story of your journey with music, please? I thought I knew where I was going to begin to answer from. And then I got a snapshot from, uh, geez, probably 50 years ago from a conversation with my father. Uh, and he talked about them playing classical music to me as a baby. like. I know the whole thing with Mozart training and babies became all the rage 10 years ago or something. But I just remember that uh, he, he had said they played music to me a lot as a kid, as a baby, an infant, before I was talking. Where I was going to begin the bio from was uh, I started taking piano lessons probably around five. My, my father did play piano. Uh, he sang uh, in churches, in uh, the synagogue near our church, in community theater. So it was it was definitely abroad in the house. We had a, a baby grand piano. So I took classical lessons till I was 15. Uh, then got more interested in rock, of course, and jazz and kind of stayed in those that area, that arena of playing uh, electric piano and piano till I was about 21, and then instinctively I just stopped. Um, and I resumed a couple years after that, and I would say that's where consciously started pursuing essence music. And then it's been an affair on and off since then. I'm 65 now, just about 65. So we can say 24 years. 
Um, no, that's horrible math. 40 for... <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah. I think you and I had a conversation, I'm going to say about four, four and a half years ago. And in that, I, I know it's just part of the dialogue we were having, I remember vividly declaring to you that I was now going to uh, zealous, zealously and robustly pursue uh, trying to open up this domain which stretches from pure mystical to hopefully incredibly down to earth, um, everything in between. Um, but in that conversation, I said, right, I'm going to really give it a go now. And mm. I've, I've pretty much stuck to that. That ended up with me getting a new synthesizer and also beginning to record myself. Uh, built a home studio, recording, and so all that's at a ripe old age. A lot to take on board and expand into, but it is uh, it has certainly been a very fulfilling uh, passion, and one that every day leads me to realize how much I have yet to learn, mm -hmm. yet to explore. So, as you tell this story, it brings to mind that you must have continuously reflected on the way music is showing up in the world and what people associate with music, and especially that so much of what we know about music in the world in more in the modern time is associated with the singer, the performer, the persona, of the person, the band, their brand, what they stand for, and so much is to do with that. And, and I know from our dialogues, you have had both, you needed to um, reason in yourself, how, would, how were you going to approach this differently, all while you were researching this idea of essence music as against what? Essence music is what's on the other side of that, and what was it that you have found that you felt was missing in music in the world that you largely, in some aspects, decided to turn your back on? Yeah, very, very uh, interesting question. Uh, and what's interesting is wanting to come from an up-to-date, adding up and dwelling in myself about it. I think as a youngster, as a young kid, at times, I, I felt myself just absolutely light up at being exposed to certain kinds of music. And I don't mean just classical, I mean uh, Motown as well, uh, growing up in America in the 60s, and, and even rock then. Um, at least some aspects of it. But to, to try and begin to uh, sanely uh, talk about or open up essence music in this conversation, let me, let me try and open up what I mean by essence before we try to apply it to music. So I think if we fetched a big old Webster's Dictionary and opened it up, and looked up essence, we'd find something along the lines of to try and distill uh, the coarse or outer to come to the core, the, the most central, fundamental, instigating or originating property of signal that's in the whatever it is we're looking at it. So, for different types of music, well, I would say with all music, to begin with, one of the questions is what is that originating, instigating signal? Mm. Can we reason it? And, and more importantly, uh, because the human systems 
are absolutely extraordinary. When we expose them to anything, like music for example, the nervous structure, just as one part of it, is able to register a thousand million impressions about what's striking it at that point. Other parts of the system uh, can register what's happening as well, how they're being affected. And so I guess at this point, it just makes sense to note I'm not talking about feelings as being the same as emotions. That's a part of what our systems register impressions with. But I'm talking about the whole kitten caboodle, the whole nine yards, uh, the nerves, the instinct, yes, the emotion, yes, the mentality, the mind, uh, different unseen or normally not considered parts of the electrical systems of us as humans. And so I think one of the first gauges you have of, well, if I look to the world or world history, where can we find, where can a person find examples of essence music? That if you're talking about a core, core instigating signal or nature or character, it will have a tremendous uh, longevity to it. So will it be there? Will, will the piece of music be of interest to humans uh, in a hundred years, in 500 years? Will it be of interest in 2000 years? And there are some pieces of music that are still of interest to humans, even older than that. Uh, some of the Indian ragas, for instance. Um, and I, and I say this to kind of begin to lay out what I'm trying to speak about in using the phrase of essence music. Trying to get to the core of something, whatever it is. And uh, maybe it's best to dive into some examples, samples. Please. Of... So please, so just there with what you said, I get two parallel ideas or mental models or senses. One is indeed the essences, the very inner core of something, the purest signal, and right next to it, which is similar and yet expand that view, which is reaching for a point of origin, reaching for some kind of a point of originality. And, and, and I get the sense that when you talk about it in this way, when we sense into a core of something, it may reveal itself with a whole kaleidoscope of expressions, sentiment, idea, feeling, painting, possibly architecture, and music too. So there is this sense that when you are sourcing a core and originating signal, music may be one of its first, most core expressions, and then it may express itself in words, in story, in theater, in all sorts of ways. Just uh, how is that resonating with the picture you were trying to, to offer us? Yes, Aviv, uh, what you've just said is absolutely spot on in terms of uh, those two parallel lines. I, I think there's also some hidden ones in, or, or some additional lines within it. So you wanted to lead us into an example, please. Just given what you just said, I actually want to read in an email I wrote to a friend please. this please. morning. Uh, very nice man. He works at uh, uh, a supermarket right up the street from where we live. And he and I have developed a conversation, ongoing conversation about music, because he's a multi-instrumentalist. He's actually much more versatile than I am. And uh, with one of the songs, hopefully we'll play today or in another part of this, I had sent it to him to ask him what sense he could make of it. How did it strike him? And so he wrote back to me 
And as is so very often time seems to happen, at the end people say something like, I hope this helps, or this may seem vague, but I hope it's of use to you. So without reading his name, here's my response today. Uh, thanks for your reflections and feedback. They are very much appreciated. I was emailing with another musical friend this week, and we were exploring how to go about interpreting music, specifically a song or music without words, instrumental music. Although you could reason that it might apply to all art forms, painting, drawing, writing, poetry, sculpture, architecture, etc. It seems that we have to develop a vocabulary that is fitting and yet accessible, as in not too stringent, otherwise a song, a piece of art, gets bottom-lined in terms of whether a person likes it or doesn't like it, which is of no practical use or application to me or anyone interested in getting to the truth about any art. As the criteria becomes solely that person's idiosyncratic likes and dislikes, potentially divorced from reality, and perhaps damaging or harmful to their life and process. It's been highlighted recently that in asking a variety of friends and acquaintances for feedback, that some will use colors as descriptors. Some people will say what scenery or settings are evoked. Others will describe how it affects different parts of their bodies and systems. Others, what it seems to call for or what it seems to nudge them into doing. In other words, a wide range of how they feel and discern what they've just listened to what they've just allowed into their most ingenious and marvelous equipment. With some, they're trying to detect what caused the song, or in the vernacular of the 60s, where's it coming from? Which I actually think can be a profound inquiry, which is a healthy practice when opening oneself up to any type of art or really anything at all. So thanks for stretching to find the language and for helping me to better decipher and understand this tune and its effects. You've helped me many times far more than you may realize. Your companion in the purposeful exploration of music, Paul. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful, so what you are addressing with him head on there is how much of people's response to everything today, not just to music, to, to art, but to everything else on the world stage, politics, any other aspect of culture, is measured through this binary framing of do I like it, do I not like it, never mind whatever it is that shapes in the first place, our likes and dislikes. And what you are saying, unless we are prepared to go beyond that superficial, often unreasoned, shaped by all sorts of other elements in, in our bringing and experience and such filter, unless we are prepared, prepared to put this filter aside and actually engage with an inquiry. And what you, I think, ran through in, in this email is a loom of considerations of how you could choose to listen to music. What does it affect in my system? What does it trigger in me? Is it certain scenery, certain feelings, and so on? What could it catalyze in terms of state, and what would that state be a preparation for? So your beginning to open here the, the broader consideration, the broader science of how to listen functionally to music, where the music is a functional tool inside the bigger cosmology of human process and possibility. That's compelling 
a compelling starter to get us into the territory. And I would simply add to what you've just said, that rather than like and dislike as being a criteria, how about is it nourishing or is it depleting for any of these systems or for me and my life and my life's purpose? And, and, and now let me work towards the plain Please. part of a song. Because had you and I been born 5,000 years ago, in many ways, essence art would have been much closer to hand, most likely living in a small tribe or a village. Almost everything those humans at the time made in the way of what we might refer to as art, be it some kind of bodily ornamentation or painting or sculpture or song or simple music, almost all they could make back then was essence art, essence music. And, and the reason I would say that is, for example, here where we live in the Pacific Northwest, in the last seven days, it's like, the planet through a switch and fall means the leaves have started falling and 5,000 years ago those humans didn't have TikTok and Facebook and YouTube <laughs> they didn't have wireless anything they didn't have phones they didn't have electricity and and I don't want to put down technology. What I'm saying is they weren't swamped and overwhelmed by having to cope with the pressures and stress of all those technologies. So for them, 5,000 years ago, when fall came, like I just described, their dance and movements most likely would have reflected the leaves falling, the, the transition in colors that they would have been working with in their fabric or jewelry or whatever, would have reflected the natural ecology they lived within. These days, it's extraordinarily difficult for any of us to make enough space to even notice what's going on in the planet, never mind the universe, or in the bigger picture, outside the kind of high-pressure, mostly nonsense uh, domains of politics and economics. Not that they don't affect us and aren't important, but... I don't know how much we would, I would say they constitute essence, science, or practices of any kind. So the first song I wanted to run by, and uh, hopefully get it going here. I'm not going to play the whole song, but came out of uh, one of what now must be tens of thousands of practice sessions, maybe more. Um, and, and in this case, it was working with a specific uh, ethnic instrument on the new synthesizer I mentioned. And suddenly what I found was that the tonality of the instrument immediately created a small portal and in which uh, almost it's almost like getting on the back of a horse and riding for a while. Mm. In which the upfront watchfulness would be, is it safe or not? Is it regenerative or not? Is, will it most likely lead to uh, increased intelligence? 
for, for me, because I'm still learning. So, and, and that's kind of me taking a shot at the, uh, would I describe essence music as channeling? Because I think essence, I, I think the notion of channeling often means opening oneself up to anything in the neighborhood. Right. And not anything in my physical neighborhood is safe, uh, and nor in the realms that we're speaking of. But mm -hmm. so having made sure it was safe, that it would most likely lead to an enhancement of my intelligence about music, about the uh, instruments, and feeling like it was uh, in no way debased or degenerative. And, and the qualifier for safe in the way you talk about it here is, is it safe for your inner lives? Is it safe for your soul and spirit? Is it safe for where you as a human being is aiming, where you're aiming and what you want to bring into your life? It, it's almost in the sense of, is it, is it a safe food for me to eat or consume into my system? It, it, am I describing that correctly? Very much so. Uh, think if if rock stars and pop stars had that simple filter about what they were going to connect to, how many of them would still have been around? So uh, this instrument, it just so I was going to say something about it. It's, it's, it's a mark of respect for the essence musicians who have been engaging with the domain of music as pretty much as long as humans have been on the planet. And I was making the case that in some ways it was more straightforward 5,000 years ago, 10,000 mm. years ago, because they didn't have to deal with the details and habits, stresses and minutia that we do. Yes. So I'll play this just for a minute or so, uh, enough hopefully to give a sense of it. So a, a mark, a, a tribute to the indigenous and native peoples who were able to connect with uh, planetary essences. And 
in some ways when a new dance would appear it was like a gift from the planet uh, interpreted and translated through those ladies men boys girls uh, and offered as a tribute back to the great mother herself and and it's curious uh, just touch on two points as, as we move forward because People will always say, so what's this instigating signal with music or when, where any of the arts are concerned? And if you go into the etymology of the word muse, M-U-S-E, you get the sense maybe something to do with museums. But, and, you, and you trace it back, uh, you get this uh, reference into the gifts of the nine goddesses of the Greek gods in those nine realms or domains of gifting or the different types of arts there are and, and then I was thinking ah okay so if I was going to try and create a loom for today's call a few of the key words well one was nourish which we've touched on as a, as a down-to-earth grounding and anchor of sanity for what are you opening yourself to or, or do you want to open up to yourself? Do you want to open yourself up to anything that's not nourishing? I think the next would be this notion of the muse. As, as that word came into usage in, in Europe, uh, the muse, they would say divine divinely and often they would say divinely inspired rather than those uh, specific Greek goddesses the daughters of Zeus or something uh, this is way before artists would say he or she is my muse this is way before the person it was bridging into the semi-conscious and unconscious realms or I should say the semi-conscious and unconscious part of our faculties and then how we engage with those originating worlds, the unseen worlds in which we live. And so the, the, the next fascinating step for exploring music or again I think any of the arts is, uh, and this is the third word for the loom of today, is they would say that being influenced by the divine got locked or coded into English language in terms of inspiration, which just literally means to breathe in. Mm. Thus, you know, inspire to breathe in and expire to breathe out, or sometimes uh, translated as well to respire. And I'm bringing inspire specifically up in context of a human trying or working to connect to some kind of originating signal that is nourishing, because why would you want to connect to anything that's not? And hopefully, this broadens uh, essence music, something that's not just nourishing for the musician or artist but in turn can be nourishing healing uplifting supportive of service to the planet to the larger human community to our other brothers and sisters known and unknown yes so in what you are bringing now into the consideration this loom of considerations is the idea of functional music in the sense of causative in variety of different ways. <clears throat> you may be wandering into a room recognizing that the circumstance requires a certain healing induction. And so as a musician, you have the capacity to reach through the fundamentals of your working activated looms of music 
into the symphonic arrangements and harmonies that would be catalytic in that moment to instigate healing. Or you may be wandering into another space and what's required is a music that will specifically induct peace, peace of mind, peace of soul, peace of and, and serenity and a tranquility in the nervous system to induce the conditions in the state where a different conversation can begin. Or you may be wandering thirdly into a whole other different process and gathering of people who are trying to celebrate the best of each other and the best of all that are present, in which there is an honoring and a recognition and an acknowledgement and appreciation of the diversity of voices and potential that we bring. And what you're describing is that when you are approaching the, the domain of music and the functional power of music, you can serve in all of those different ways, probably with music more directly, more powerfully than anything else. Because you keep using, describing how to do that, you must connect to something in yourself, but then as you connect to something in yourself, you connect to that configuration or that harmony or that symphonic arrangement, and that then becomes the arrangement that, be, that create, catalyzes that result in other people. Because we are, are we not the piano or the violin or whatever, full complete orchestra of the universe playing through us. Yeah, and so now the trouble is every time you speak, it, it opens it up even further, which is marvelous. I said, what's needed here is not a TikTok video. Of yeah, we are not producing a TikTok video for sure. <laughs> which, uh, even though it may reflect the modern uh, attention span is, is not enough. It's not even enough to do a one and a half, two hour documentary. It, it really needs to be kind of a Ken Burns documentary. Yeah, right. or, or we will convert this into a series of installments. So we have the, we, this is a, a wonderfully amenable and friendly medium. We can, we can talk for a couple of hours today and do another one next week and another one the week after that. And, it's all right, and by which time you'll have new songs to share. So, but I know you wanted to lead us into uh, a new song, a new example. So in this, in this place, we're describing a Zoom event, three-day Zoom event, with some 250 friends from around the world. And we are in the pursuit of discovery and understanding and appreciation of this time and how the epochal story is unfolding through and inside of, of our lives. And as we engage in live explorations and sometime in dialogue and sometime in meditative pursuits and sometime in breakout in rooms around specific topics and such, there are those moments where we want to step back and actually allow us uh, allow ourselves to be in the contemplative dwelling of the mosaic of what is forming and yourself and other friends will sometime live in the moment produce the the music that that actually is emerging in the collective agency that we have become in this process that's how I would describe my experience. In the previous year as well, there'd been times as you were, before COVID, where you were traveling around in person and conducting processes. And you would, we would have a chat or you would send me an email with strong impressions you had about the nature or some of the early detections you had about the process that was approaching. And actually with this last one that happened as well. And I had sent you some early kind of musical sketches, a couple of impressions I got from speaking with you and 
casting my mind and faculty towards it. So, but just let me slow down the conversation, the way this plays out, because I'm not a musician. I would go into my preparatory process and the work I do in preparation, and I would distill very briefly few ideas or themes or qualities or feelings, and that's all I will send you away, and you will convert this into a, a, an original composition that three weeks later in an event in London or in Israel or somewhere else, we would be playing on day two or a day three of a multi-day process. And somehow it's as though the music was composed in the moment because it seems to have intuited in your process, you seem to be able to connect in advance to some of the atmospheres and the feelings that will be invoked in that process, whether it's very meditative or whether it's more vibrant and spirited or uh, whether it's longing and yearning or, or whether it's uh, replenishing and recharging of the arterial blood system or what, what, whatever you will choose to do. All of those are the, the part of the portfolio of possibilities that we have been exploring into. And sure. time and again, I've just been uh, moved, inspired, stunned, amazed by the conductive power of music and how it leads us to the inner state and the, the, the inner and collective ecology that's so promotive of the perceptions and the shared appreciation and, and the collective action that we are looking to facilitate and enable because it is always about, in the first place, enabling in other people that are gathering for the process their aspirations, their growth, their development, their inner search and quest and how that culminates in them individually and collectively. Yeah, so at the point there's this multitude of uh, unique original art, uh, unique original songs, unique original writings, unique original never heard before heard stories. And it's all evidence for a, as you said, a conductive and connected gathering and coming together by those people in service. What we, are, what we are beginning to describe and sense into here is truly the idea of new portals because while there is tremendous value and significance throughout the entire history of people gathering to celebrate where they come from and honor and cherish their shared values, their shared history, their shared culture, their, their shared tradition, and all that they are carrying as a legacy from the past. Part of what we are describing here is a bit of a turning of this thing on its head where a group of people can gather in the search of the celebration of the future that's seeking to emerge with us today, in small or in large, and the idea that part of the collective human function, and this is where art and music become so significant, is in how we may be able together with those tools and, and uh, aids and, and media of facilitation, search not to discover and celebrate what was, but search together to discover, to celebrate what is emerging now when we are together on the frontier of emergence and discovery. And that is where some of the music that I've experienced from you and other friends of ours is so riveting and conductive because music then is able to induce or conduct or induct the feelings and the perceptions before we even have the language to understand yeah. what it is. But we are sensing that something new is opening and something new is possible. And it is 
why it's so significant? We, because we live in a, in, a, in, in a day and age where, as you said, it's not only the TikTok and the Twitter age, it's everything is brained and intellectualized so very quickly. And our endeavor in those processes are actually to slow down, is to slow down a little bit and engage what you were describing before as the, the fuller loom of the human possibility in terms of instinct and the, the other dormant and latent faculties of response and registration and sensitivity, where again, music is probably the most powerful conductor there is. So I, I know you were leading into another song to play, but that's what, what you said caused in me. So uh, we are riffing here live, my friend. <laughs> it's, it's the wonderful uh, liberation it's it's the sounds of spontaneous, uh, purposeful, nutrimental explosions going on, in which it just uh, cascades or yeah chain reacts into further insight and perceptions. Yeah, whether whether our friends that will see this on YouTube. Uh, find our dialogue to be completely googledygookish or not, come along for the ride and let's lead please into another song. <laughs> I just had an imagery of, um, you know how increasingly over the last several years, there will all, often be someone in frame uh, doing sign language. Yeah. Or the hearing impaired, our hearing impaired, our hearing impaired friends. When, <laughs> when you were speaking, I got the imagery of maybe in the future videos of this portal, rather than sign language, or maybe you have sign language on one side, but on the other, you have one of our friends whose focus where art is concerned is through movement. Yes. And so live as a person would speak or play a piece of music, you would have that almost as you would have seen 6,000 years ago. The, the at the point never before seen or witnessed moving uh, response to what's happening at the point. I would love for us to develop the technology and the capacity to do that. So there will be while, say, a dialogue like this is playing out and or while the music in a minute will play out, we have another camera <clears throat> focusing on somebody who translates into movement and posture, the feeling in the states and the way they interpret in their entirety of, in the entirety of their system, those ideas in movement. And then we will have a fourth person translating this into what is more the nature of graphic facilitation into a drawing with colors and schemes and words and, and some of it perhaps turning into animation. And I think we should keep this in the dialogue because we need these talents uh, to join us. So it's all right if we talk about this in the creative flow of the discovery as it, as it is emerging. Right, agreed. agreed. So now, but please lead us into the next song you were gonna share. So, so okay, so in the run up to the three day global Zoom call that you and I referenced earlier. We had had a, a chat, or I think actually you had sent an email with some early impressions. And I had, I spent time at the keyboard, I sent you some music. And I think your response, I could look it up, but it's it, it was something like, Perhaps that perhaps that's fitting that you yourself are in a process of ongoing shape shifting and shedding to find what's going to work best. So, I, and I 
point this out only to say there's parts of what I had sent you back then that have actually ended up in this piece. So as the three-day global call went on, I was fortunate that the next day I had a vacation day. So when the overflow, overspill situation of having been on the three days... The afterglow. Uh, well, I'd actually tried to play p most of it in, or different parts of it in live, but Zoom wasn't cooperating. And it made sense because of the friction it introduced to stop trying, uh, which I'm happy to say it now seems we've fixed. Uh, we'll find out in the next calls. So, but yes, in the overspill, the afterglow of the three-day process, I sat down and played live uh, what I called a sketch, and I actually posted it up to the Produce website. So the evidence and trace is there. From that, and uh, it got the title of Ascending from the Town of Nebig. And ascending from the town, it's the, the journey up from the town into the mountain. You know, one might almost say from a metropolis up into a higher or maybe Acropolis-like uh, view. And for me, one impression from when I was uh, oof, late 20s, uh, I was in Ecuador in a small group uh, of us had gotten permission to ascend up to pyramids that the government had recently discovered in Ecuador. They're still buried. And for us to camp up there, uh, which we made the journey at night. It wasn't like walking along cliffs. It was just dark. It was rainy. We had lanterns. You stay focused. It was a safe climb. At which point we then, many or several of us, those of us who were interested, went into what could you feel, detect, discern that was there, which, which I won't go into. The, the next morning upon wakening, though, there was the most amazing experience, which was, it was a blue sky and sunny. And as we looked down into the valley from which we came, uh, what we saw looked to be an ocean. Hmm. And what it was, it was an ocean of clouds. We had climbed up, we had ascended high enough, and actually going around the base of the mountains appeared to be water, but it was the clouds, that's how high we had got. And there, there's a certain feeling with when you get to that altitude. Um, some people might have the reference for getting above tree line if they've climbed it. And so I'm going to play like the last couple minutes of this song. In one respect, you could say it's uh, having made most of the ascents and then coming back to the newly established base camp uh, mm. is one way that uh, this song configured itself in me. Thank you. 
Let me mention a few overlays and then look to wrap it up, perhaps, Yeah. as we've both got busy days. Part of the uh, joyous stretching that is going on with the engagement with the domain of essence music these days is that uh, it's one thing finding a melody which can be a breakthrough and it's, it's uh, not enough finding the tempos, although in this song there's uh, uh, four tempo changes, you know, three different colors by my estimation. I mean, deliberately sought to connect to uh, white for the introduction, yellow for the second and fourth sections, uh, yellow into yellow gold, and then the sprightly bit, which is where we started uh, in terms of what I played today is, is silver, 100, 120 beats per minute. So in addition to tempo, there's uh, finding a way to actually bridge between those different tempos. And then uh, there's arranging and uh, adding in new instruments that I've never worked with before. Hopefully when people hear it, they'll be able to hear there's actually one passage that marimbas come in and then disappear. First time I've ever found a place to include marimbas. Uh, I worked with new woodwind settings that I've never stretched into before and they presented a unique kind of challenge. Um, a new, uh, they call them voices with some systems, but of uh, orchestral French horns that I've never worked with before. And, and that's just all part of trying to pull together the puzzle of what would fit with the signal, the instigating signal, the originating signal, I think we both sensed and detected far in advance um, but then that so that the song would would come out in a way befitting uh, the occasion and befitting 
I think the the motive of why that Zoom call and global gathering happened. And you're also introducing there that one of the ways you work into and research into Essence Music is the configurations and the the natures of colors. So the research into colors, what colors represents, the frequency, nature of the colors, and we mean that not just in the visible light frequency nature, but in terms of how different colors resonate in the human system and activate different parts of our internal organs, for example, and the whole science and, and art of that and how you can enhance that function and that process with through tempo, through rhythm, through particular natures of, as you said, colors of music that you introduce. So a lot more to develop into and, and explore further. But what would you, as a closing thought, leave us with today if you if somebody wanted to contemplate essence music what thought would you leave them with well one one line of contemplation and i think it's more opening up and wondering about would be of what is uh or what are uh a quality or a set of qualities, a collection of qualities that you know will be nourishing you to your life now. You are sure will be nourishing to other people's lives now. And to the best of your ability to add it up would be of use and nourishment and service to other humans in the future. And then, my friends, I think like the photograph showed, you, you would know, you would have a, a pretty uh, clear view that you're on the path that's headed someplace very purposefully and that was that was the last word for my loom of today was music with purpose in fact it's full of purpose it's the song the composition the way it's played how it's come together how it's finally assembled, has been done so purposefully. There's a good starter, I believe. Beautiful. So, qualities, the inquiry of qualities, the quest to identify the qualities you want to enhance and enrich and nurture, and how will you express those qualities in music, and then music with purpose, and sensing into purpose through music, as a consideration of both your personal purpose, but also an inquiry about the purpose of human life in the broadest possible sense. It's a great place to lend this uh, starter research into okay. Essence Music. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, uh, Aviv, for making the possibility of this and for making it happen. Appreciate it.